Hi, my name is Paul and I'm a writer here at Impul. Today I'm going to speak to you about grammar. First, why should we practice good grammar? Two reasons, clarity and elegance. It makes your writer easier to understand and it gives your writing a certain grace. Does that mean we should adhere to all grammar rules all the time? Well, no. Some rules are only useful for impressing grammar teachers. They don't do anything for clarity or style, and they're better left to academics who just want to sound smart. Here it is useful to distinguish between two types of grammar rule. Real rules, like those that govern how sentences are joined, and rules made up by people who just like to make up rules. Here's a real rule. When you join two independent clauses, you have to use appropriate punctuation and joining words. Here you can use one of three techniques when joining two sentences or independent clauses. If you didn't use one of these three techniques, you would create a run-on sentence and possibly some confusion. So many people consider it good practice to stick to this rule. Here's another real rule. Every sentence needs to contain a subject, verb and complete idea. The first of the sentences below is complete as it has all three. The other two are fragments. In standardized English, these would definitely be incorrect. This rule is made up. It's called the split infinitive. According to this rule, you should never put an adverb between two and the verb in an infinitive. The following sentence would be incorrect according to this rule. But does the second sentence seem that much better than the first? No. This rule doesn't improve a reader's understanding of it, and it doesn't make it any more elegant. This is a rule you can ignore. You're probably thinking that I'm going to recommend that you can adhere to all real rules and ignore all made up rules, but it's not that simple. You can always break made up rules. These include split infinitives, rules about sentences not joining in prepositions, the rules that tell you that you can't start a sentence with a conjunction, and the rule that says that you can't use whose to refer to things. Sometimes you can also break real rules, but only when it's called for. Copywriting requires a voice, and sometimes that voice is colloquial. When it is, you have to write like you speak, and you don't speak with perfect grammar. We frequently use fragments as sentences, and often use pronouns to refer to abstract concepts. Unless you were looking for it, you wouldn't even notice the fragment after the question here. It just sounds natural. And this is a rule that you can probably break every once in a while when it suits the tone. Another real rule states that you can't use a pronoun like that, which, this or it to refer to an abstract concept. In the first sentence, the word which refers to everything in italics. In the world of academia, this sentence would be considered a crime. Again, it's actually okay to break this rule as long as the tactic is not overused, and as long as it doesn't create ambiguity. Only the second sentence is a problem, because it is unclear whether it refers to politics or talking about politics. Some real rules should be adhered to just because if you don't, you'll be judged. If you break these, some people assume either that you're unschooled, or that you think you're too special to adhere to standard grammar practices. One of these rules governs colon usage. It states that you can only put a colon at the end of a full sentence and that the sentence has to contain a reference to the words that follow it. Here it's useful to think of a colon as an equal sign. Then there's the dreaded apostrophe. In the first sentence here, there is only one boy, so the apostrophe comes before the S. In the second sentence, there are many boys, so the apostrophe comes after this. But also don't forget that some plural nouns like children and people don't usually carry an S. With these, you're, ready, you're actually placed an apostrophe before the S and not after it. Okay, those are my grammar points for today. I hope you found those useful.